Right, I'm going to speak very quickly. Uh, I've got lots of slides, but they're mostly pictures. There's only one with words on it, and I'll stop a bit longer on that one. Uh, I'm going to talk about a particular project in what is the most health-deprived community in the southwest, one of the most health-deprived in England, where the University of Plymouth, through the medical school, is now uh, got a very significant project that I'm going to talk to you about. And I'm going to suggest that uh, a lot of the stuff that we deal with looking at health inequalities has, in fact, underlying it a sustainability issue. Some of the causes of health inequalities are similar to the kinds of causes that are causing all kinds of other problems, and some of the solutions might be uh, linked as well. So uh, that's a map of Plymouth. Those of you who know Plymouth will know that the waterfront area uh, historically has been where a lot of the deprivation has been for all kinds of reasons. And uh, Devonport's down there in the pink. Along with, I'll give you some more kind of figures about that. But more kind of interestingly, that it's an amazing community. There used to be three cities in Plymouth, of which the, before Plymouth became a kind of one, Devonport was one. It was bombed to death during the war, and uh, that the MOD and so on has got had a big uh, impact on it. It's about 6,000 population. It's historically a fascinating community. It was really at its worst about six years ago. And as I will explain to you, things are changing now. That's the Guildhall. So it's full of some remaining, a few amazing sort of grade one listed buildings. But that was the Bull Ring, which is where I, when I first came to Plymouth, I used to do home visits in there. It was one of the worst housing estates there was. That's gone now because it's been replaced by some new housing, but that was me doing a picture on a home visit when I was called to see a patient somewhere, and it was like that. There was a flat where they used to burn the cars under the kind of tunnel, and it was quite popular because you didn't have very bad heating bills in that particular flat. <laughs> um, Devonport Regeneration was a government-funded scheme that's just finished, but uh, came up with this rather lovely slogan about Devonport people's dreams, and we did a load of work about what people wanted, and we used these kinds of terms, which I think actually was quite an innovative idea. So we looked at health in terms of being a resource for living. Health is very much a resource for living. So we said, those are the sorts of things that we suggested that health could do for people. And we wanted to know what we could do to help them. We did loads of community consultation and that kind of stuff. And the reason we did that is this is this kind of indictment of, of how we live as a society now. So that's a map of Plymouth looking at health, life expectancy at birth and if you take a bus from one end to the other you lose on average two years of life for every mile that you travel we're down at the bottom in Devonport where the average life expectancy of my patients is 72 and that just gives it a bit more starkly uh, and a lot of that I would suggest some of the underlying causes of that I think are very relevant to what we're talking about in this conference today that just shows it in a nice kind of graphical way but it's pretty striking isn't it if you put the neighborhoods of Plymouth on a graph like that uh, underlying that is other things so this is the IMD the index of multiple deprivation it links all kinds of things that relate to health and basically Devonport scores very badly on all of them and not surprisingly and this is you know always in the in the news and the press we get very high use of um, benefits and so on uh, this is Sir Michael Marmot, UCL, and I put this up because finally the penny is dropping in health that being poor is really bad for you. <laughs> and you'd think, oh, it's pretty obvious, but it's taken us, we're very thick. It's taken us ages to work it out. Thank God we now have this idea called the social determinants of health, which Michael's banging on about. And he's written a really good book called Status Syndrome, showing that if you line people up according to status, however measured, those at the front of the queue will live longer than those at the back. And it's very fascinating stuff. Uh, there's another really fascinating book that Wilkins, and some of you will know this, saying that unequal societies are really bad and health uh, is very hard to be healthy in a very unequal society. Um, we're now doing something about it. So, so uh, Wendy Purcell came to us in Devonport some years ago when I was working with DLC, and we made all kinds of links. And what we weren't doing was much about health, and now we are. So we've just four weeks ago opened a, it's a GP practice, but it's an academic practice, and we're tackling health in a course. So I work there as a GP, and what, I want, what we want to do there is link up Thank goodness we're now part of the University of Plymouth 
in the medical school, which has been quite difficult to be. We very much are now. We're very keen to work together. People have got ideas about what more we can be doing in Devonport. For example, health and nutrition. We're looking at cardiovascular disease. <laughs> Cardiovascular disease is the biggest leading cause of mortality. It's almost always preventable. We have some of the highest rates of cardiovascular disease in the country. Uh, and you know, there's a certain amount we can do as medics around this, but clearly there's a whole load to do with diet and nutrition and exercise and God knows what else. This is the one with words in it. Um, so <laughs> I'm lead for population health, but it's be called public health for the medical school. And a lot of the responses of think, things like obesity and smoking and lack of exercise and all these kinds of things and the rubbish that people eat, and I've got a slide about that in a minute, the, the response is actually better for your health. So we're trying to have, there's a kind of positive message that's saying responding to sustainability issues is actually good for your health. So instead of it all being doom and gloom, there's quite, there's kind of a more positive, and this is a kind of ecological view of public health. And the reason we're doing that is because the threats are different. So for a long time, this is the Broad Street pump. You know, infectious diseases was the problem that we all faced. Then there were smogs and stuff like that was what public health was all about. Now, we realize that we're kind of all in it together. You know, you can't separate the threats. Even, <laughs> we're all in, and, and these are the kinds of things. So the kinds of things we're tackling now, things like obesity, which is just so much tied up with how we live our lives. Um, and responding to that, so this is a photo that I took in Marlborough Street, so a Devonport primary school of children being poisoned by their lunch. <laughs> but the kind of system that brings such you know, unhealthy food to be the food that people, I mean, why are they so poor that that's what they have to eat? And why are we providing that kind of stuff to these kids? Do you know you can get 144 frozen burgers in Iceland for £4.90. I mean, if there's any horse in it, that would be good, you know. <laughs> and this is, what pe <laughs> this is what people are eating. So these kinds of, so at the moment we're kind of tackling health need and we're doing general practice. And, you know, but I'm very keen to link up the broader health agendas. And, you know, so this, just to give a kind of global view, this is a kid, another photo I took when I was working here. That's kwashiorkor, core, which is what you get if you don't have it, enough protein. Obesity is kind of another side of the same thing. Um, and what we're trying to include now is the idea, and this is very new for us medics, you know, that, that something to do with sustainability actually is impacting on health. And thank goodness it's now being accepted that if you tear great, that's what they're doing with tar sands, apparently, to get shale gas and so on out and that has an effect on health through climate change and so on and there are kind of obvious things to do with war and so on so we're there in Devonport the University of Plymouth is really making a difference we're linking up with sustainability agenda and anyone who's got any kind of uh, connections that we can make we'd be very glad to hear from you thank you